we wouldn't be here without you, without your encouragement, without your love, without your prayers. To support the ministry, we have a new uh, offer here. It's my new uh, DVD, uh, and um, it, it, it encompasses so many speakers. I have L.A. Marzulli, Stephen Van Cars, Josh Peck, uh, Lisa Haven. I mean, it just goes on and on of many guests that I've interviewed. A lot of these interviews you're not going to find on YouTube. Uh, you can find some of them on Dave Hebner TV. But this is a collection that if everything blows up and goes to Hades, and we don't have any of this anymore, this is a hard object, a hard asset you can have uh, in your collection. We talk about Satanism, demonic activity, one world government, uh, the uh, new world religion, uh, miracles and prophecy. So order this DVD by uh, texting the word bonus to 41444. That's bonus to 41444. Or you can go to David Hevener dot tv forward slash order and uh please pick that up it would really help the ministry uh you could also go to lastevangelist.com if you want to get involved with last evangelist maybe have a walk-on part or whatever you have a chance to support us there we're we're partner funded we don't go to netflix or any of those other people god said go to my people uh they'll take care of you as far as the ministry uh you can go you can text the word chosen which you are to 71777 and think about becoming a financial partner. All right. I want to thank you so much. All right. My next guest, U.S. Army veteran, 12 years law enforcement experience, including deputy sheriff, police officer, U.S. Air Marshal. Yes. Private investigator. But now his mission, his life's work is down at the border, the border of this country and another country. And he's here to shed some light, to tell what I believe is truth that many people are not hearing. My guest is Tim Enlow. Tim, you with me, buddy? I am. Thanks for having me on, David. Thanks for being on. Tim, uh, you're at the border. I want to find out what you're doing down there. How in the world did you end up in this as a U.S. Army veteran, law enforcement? Why are you down at the border? How'd that happen? Well, I was hired uh, by a media company as a head of security, and they were doing, they were sending some reporters down to the U.S.-Mexico border in southern Texas, and they wanted me to go down there with a team of uh, my security guys to protect the reporters while they were covering the story down there. Okay. All right. So you got down there. You're covering them. Something you saw, some things you witnessed uh, happened, which caused you to do what you're doing now. What was that? Well, I mean, uh, you know, we, we went to the reporters, uh, like a lot of reporters do, they went to the big uh, detention facilities, like out in Donna, Texas, uh, things like that. And, uh, you know, they kind of were doing their stand up reporting. And we went to several different locations. But as I was looking around, uh, you know, it became really obvious that what, uh, what we were looking at was like, industrial scale importation of illegal migrants by the US government um, using several charities as a as a front and literally a well oiled pipeline to move human beings into the United States and to distribute them throughout the United States. So basically it's human trafficking if you want to sum it up. Uh, I guess human trafficking, human smuggling, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's, it's selling humans so that they can buy the humans back when they get back in this country. We'll get into that. Who's behind this? Who do you think? Um, obviously, Satan's behind it. It's a satanic. It's part of the Antichrist, really. But who is he using uh, for this? Well, I mean, this operation absolutely could not run without the active funding and assistance of the current U.S. government. Okay. All right. In other words, uh, they're enabling it, uh, which is causing it to happen. Why is this? Why, what, what's the reason? What's the purpose, ultimately, you think? Well, I mean, we'd have to ask them, but I, I think that it's quite obvious that they want to bring in um, more votes. They want to bring in a, a, uh, uh, an underclass. They want to create a permanent underclass in, in my opinion, uh, because an underclass is easier to rule. And, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. So it's all about control. Absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 
you know, and what gets me, um, Tim, is I listen to the news and it's like I'm done with the news on television. I can't listen to it. Anymore. I don't care if it is a conservative station. It's like all they want to do is promote sensationalism. Like, oh, this happened. Oh, this. yeah, I know all the bad stuff happened, but what are we going to do about it? I don't right. want to hear about what the bad stuff anymore. I want a solution. They don't give you solutions. Or oh, they'll bring some senator on that's yapping about this, yapping about that. But Tim, I just have a feeling this is coming from both sides. Like, it's not just a Democrat, but this is a both side thing. I agree 100%. I mean, the silence uh, from the Republicans on this, this border issue is deafening right now. So, yeah, yeah I absolutely agree that uh, both sides uh, play a big part in this. Yeah. Now, you mentioned uh, the uh, Catholic charities, okay? Um, specifically, you mentioned. Uh, by the way, are you, you're a man of faith, correct? I am. I, I believe in God, and I was actually raised Catholic. You were raised Catholic. Are you? I'm you're, honest. but you're not a practicing Catholic, though. Uh, I don't go to church. No, I don't. Okay, but you believe in God. You believe in as Jesus as the Son of God, the only Absolutely. way to. Yeah, but the Catholic charities, um, they're being used as a front. In other words, they're be they're. <laughs> it's almost like money laundering. Like they're running money through these charities. Um, let me set this up and tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, here's a charity, a Catholic charity, and uh, the powers to be need uh, a charity as a front because it looks good. You know, we're, we're helping these people. We're Absolutely. doing stuff for these people, right? So therefore, there can be large donations that go to these charities so that there's funding to do what it is to do to get people over here and take them through the system and all that. Because the powers to be can't just write a big fat check and say, I'm funding the whole thing. They're running it through various organizations. Am I anywhere near correct on that? You're 100% correct. And, uh, and, and, you know, I'd like to make one note because several people have contacted me about this. And it's true. Yeah. It's not just the Catholic charities, right? There's, yeah. there's uh, the Lutherans and the Baptists. There's other charities involved. But, right. uh, but charities, religious charities, are being used in many cases uh, as these fronts uh, to bring these illegal migrants in now by the millions. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I did a show last year uh, with with a guest. I think it's Bill Federer. And uh, we talked about how the religious organizations, Lutherans, Episcopalians, I don't know, you name it, they're, they're all, how they were uh, very instrumental in bringing over the Muslims from Somalia. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, they did this in the north, the northeast, especially. So this is not a new thing. This has been used going on for decades. For decades. And and when right. I was an air marshal, I, I saw some of it, um, you know, because I, I was in the airports a lot. And so, you know, a lot of the airports, if you noticed, almost every shop in the airport would have some type of uh, Somali or uh, immigrants working in there. And, uh, and I asked them, you know, how did you come over here? And, and they would tell me, you know, through a, through a religious charity. But mm -hmm. I would make this point. Um, even at the height of that, uh, we were dealing with a few thousand at a, you know, at a time. It was mm -hmm. controlled. It was, uh, it was a trickle in effect. That's mm -hmm. done. The dam has burst, and now it is a full-fledged flood. Okay. I want to talk to you about children coming over the border. Okay. I want to ask you what, you know, these poor kids, they don't, it's not their fault. They, Absolutely you know, not. they're children. They're, I've, I've heard them about, about them being tossed over the, the wall and, uh, you know, and they're being used by the drug cartels, okay? And uh, I want to ask you about that. What what should we do as compassionate people? How should we handle the children in this situation? It's a tough one because, you know, there's so much going on here. First of all, we know, we have proof that, you know, through the statistics of Border Patrol that, you know, a, a significant percentage of kids, you know, upwards of 10 to 14 percent um, that are coming across with adults, 
these adults are not related to them. These, these children are literally being either A, trafficked or B, used as a free ticket into the United States because that's what the current policy is. If you have a child, you will now automatically be able to walk into the United States. Yes, Border Patrol has to fill out a little paperwork, but then you're immediately released, turned over to the religious charities, and then they fly you wherever you want to go. That mm -hmm. is the current policy. Um, so, you know, and, and, and the disturbing part for me is, so the administration and Border Patrol and ICE, they all know that these kids don't belong to these folks. But because we've now done away with DNA testing, uh, because under Trump, that was evil, separating the kids from the parents when they didn't belong to them. He caught a right. lot of negative publicity for that. Right. So because of that, um, they now allow these adults to stay with those children. Yeah. And they yeah. actually and the government is actually putting them paying for them to be in hotels together. Um, right. So, yeah. yeah, Tim. Your background is law enforcement, military. Okay, you're a you're a uh, fighter, warrior. Okay, uh, I don't know what were you a cook or a medic? Or, I mean, you were a what'd you do? <laughs> I was a cavalry scout in in the army, uh, and right. I did diplomatic protection for seven and a half years in Iraq and Afghanistan. Okay, so that was a form of recon. Uh, uh, well, it's a reconnaissance. Yeah, you yeah. go out, look for yeah. the enemy, report back. Yeah. Well, you were a, a you were a fighter. You were a warrior. You were out there in the war zone. Let's put it that way. Um, help me with this, because I got a big problem. All of these ICE agents, military, police department, the fighters, the ones that stand up for what's right, where are they? Why do they keep yielding to this nonsense? Why doesn't somebody stand up? Um... And, and this is going to sound really harsh um, for the same reason that, you know, German guards put people on the trains, yeah. you know, because yeah. stand up and say no meant an immediate end to your career at the least right. um, today. And we're talking about Border Patrol police, um, immediate end to your career back then, obviously, <laughs> when, when they were putting them on trains, you'd be shot, you know, for right. for. Right. So, or sent to the Russian front. So, right. um, you know, it's um, it, it's almost like self survival, I guess, and, and not not looking that there's a higher cause here. Um, right. right. For whatever reason, I never. That's just not. <laughs> I stood up to folks in the police department. I stood up to folks in the air marshal. I, I I just I look mm -hmm. at it like I can always get another job. That's yeah. Me. And I made well, some sacrifices for that, but some people don't don't view it that way. Yeah, yeah well, we, we need more Tim Inlows out there is what we need. We need to pray for you, and we need to pray for more of you, okay? Uh, people to wake up and to take a stand. I talk on this show about telling the truth. I talk on this show, Tim, about in, on, on, in the spiritual world that we have the power of God in us, that the enemy has no real control over us, that uh, we need to fear more God than Satan because we need to look at eternity, right? Instead of just what's temporary. And I agree with that hundred percent. And and David, if there's one point, if there's one point that I could make real quick, and that is yeah. just, that, you know, like you said, this is being cloaked as some kind of big humanitarian, like, oh, look what we're doing for these folks. Right. But what we saw and what we what we found is that really under the current system, we're just kind of taking these folks from an exploited that are being exploited in their home countries. And the yeah. way we're going about bringing them in currently, we're putting them right back into a high probability situation that they're going to be exploited here in our country. And, and that's something that I want people to understand is that that's not doing these folks a favor. That is no. not, I have nothing but empathy for, for people that want to, you know, come to America and improve their lives. Uh, you know, my mom's German. My, my, my wife is uh, from the Philippines. Nothing but empathy for people that come over here and want to build a better life. But when we do it in such chaos and, and, and the way it's being done right now, it's hurting these folks more, more than it's helping. How are you feeling? I'm all right. We can't let this heartbeat go past. Do you have any idea what 
this could do to me or how this could affect my career. This is something you're going to have to live with. This is something you're going to have to live with.